Hi, I'm Jim. I own a small vintage tube store called Valves and More. And in our last episode we talked about small signal tubes. Little tiny amplifiers like this. That you would typically see in a preamplifier. Today we're going to talk about power tubes. The tubes that connect up via an output transformer to your speakers or to your headphones. So, these are all power tubes. Here's an EL84 made by Valvo. You can see the boxy like plate structure. Unlike many of these tubes, which have two tubes, a dual triode in this case, inside the same glass envelope. Most power tubes, not all, but most power tubes are just one amplification circuit. In fact, all of these are like that. So that's an EL84. Here's an EL34 by Har Electroharmonix, a very common output power tube. If you look at the base, this is the same base here. This is a, a miniature 9 pin, or not, this is the 9A base. It's the same as the 12AX7. So it takes the same socket. Most power tubes will have what's called an octal base. Octa. So 8 pins. Depending on whether they need all 8 pins to make the circuit, you may or may not get 8 pins. In this case, if you count them, you see we've got seven. So you only needed seven pins to make this circuit work. Here's a very old tube. Uh, I haven't dated it, but it's probably World War II vintage. It's made by General Electric. It's called a Jan 6L6G. G just meant glass. And typically, Envelopes that are shaped like this get a special name. We call them Coke bottles. There's actually a proper name for them, and it escapes me right now. It's not necessary to know what that is. You can see here that on many of the older tubes, um, you're going to see a bit of a smoking, and what that is is a coating. If you look here, maybe you can see that there's no coating at the top, and the coating. Um, I believe is to reduce, was designed to reduce interference. So when this circuit's operating and this circuit's operating, or there's a transformer right nearby, uh, I think that was to reduce noise. You don't see that anymore. People have speculated that it was wasn't that useful or that it just cost too much money. Either way, you don't see it. This is a very expensive tube today, uh, and it's a beautiful sounding tube. It'll last a long time, but eventually it'll burn out. Now, that's a good thing to talk about. Why does a tube burn out? What ends its life? Well, you can drop it, or you can wear out the filament inside this whole plate assembly. You can't really see it that clearly here, but inside this one, there's a filament that heats up the cathode of the tube and powers essentially powers up the tube. These are quick videos, so we're not going to go into a detailed explanation. The filament, though, is quite similar to what you would find in a light bulb and an incandescent light bulb. Um, if you're young, you probably have seen them. If you're old like me, that's all there ever was in the beginning. And they have a finite life, so they burn out. Um, a good tube, any one of these is, would be considered a good tube, could have up to 10,000 hours of filament life. Maybe a lot less, maybe only 5,000, but that's a lot of hours. Um, and how do we know how these tubes operate? What's the output of these tubes? We were talking in the previous episode that a 12AX7 had a nominal output of 100 to 1. 
or you would see MU on the spec sheet saying nominal 100. But these can't handle high power. This can handle much more power as an output tube. These would be in preamplifiers, microphone preamps, anything that requires an amplification of the signal, but not a lot of power. So, here's your spec sheet. Here's the EL84. It's actually for EI, a good company in Yugoslavia. And they actually put a quick reference on the front of this big document, and it says output power in watts equals 6 watts. So, that's the maximum we can get out of this tube in a single-ended configuration. Now, if we put a pair of them together, or even a quad of them together in a string, we can get more and more power out of these tubes. But, if we wanted a lot more power, rather than build an amplifier with lots of EL84s, we'd probably build it with a tube that beats closer to our specifications, perhaps one of these. Here's the spec sheet. This is a Mullard. I don't have an EL34 Mullard to show you. They're very expensive. But here we have single-ended operation of 11 watts. 6 watts, 11, almost twice as much power, but you can see it takes a much bigger tube. And here is an RCA data sheet for the 6L6 GC. GC. G just stands for glass. The C is the series. So when the 6L6 came out, is maybe a metal version. It would be just called a 6L6 if, it's a, if there's a metal version, and there is. If it's glass, it would have a G. And the first version would have nothing on it. It wouldn't say A, but when they came out with a B and then a C. So what's the output of this? The output depends on how it's used in the circuit. So if the plate supply voltage is 200 volts, which is quite low, output is only 4 watts in a single-ended configuration. Single-ended just means that your channel goes through this tube full-time, 100% of the time. There's no other tubes in the output amplification circuit. If we put two of these together, we're not single-ended anymore. We're what's called class AB, and that's very common, a class AB amp. But if you're an audiophile like me, you might want to explore what a single-ended amp is. So, let's say we increase the plate voltage all the way up to 300, which is probably about maximum for this tube. I think maximum is 350, 300. We can get it all the way up to 6.5 watts. That doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, a single-ended, single-output tube at 6.5 watts with a reasonably efficient speaker can get very, very loud. So, what's this JAN mean? This is a mil-spec tube. It was made for a military somewhere. And that JAN gives us a hint of which military. So, that's Joint Army-Navy. And that's most likely an American tube or a Canadian tube made in Canada. So there we go. What else can I show you? Oh, yes. Here's something pretty exciting. Tubes come in all different shapes and sizes. And look at the monster. Let's compare the EL84 to this. Now, this, I haven't even looked this up. This is probably a radar tube. It came in a whole batch of military tubes. But look at the pin size difference of that. Isn't that fun? So, since you've watched to the end of the video, you get to see some nice discount codes. Feel free to use them as much as you want. I specialize in shipping affordably around the world. If you make a $150 order, the shipping is free. Everything else is a flat $20. So that's it. Fells and Moore is signing out. In our next episode, we'll talk about tube testing, vintage tubes, testing vintage tubes, and 
I think we'll do that in two parts because we're going to have to talk about cleaning tubes. That's a really big deal. Anyways, that's Jim signing out for now.